Hello, this is Prophet Six, Family Prophets, the Angel of the Church of the Laodiceans. God bless you. Today is Sunday, uh, May the 26th, 2013. And by the way, let's just count up the days here because uh, I don't want you to, th you guys to think that I fell off. But uh, okay, that's 30, 7, and that's 44. And 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. This is day 50 in commemoration of the Rwandan massacre, which I call the outpouring of the unholy ghosts in a country that is, by the way, that was, by the way, 99% Christian. 99% Christian. And the Christianity that they have there in Rwanda, mm -hmm. the Christianity they have there was exported from the West. Belgium, France, Germany, Rome, Australia. It was exported there. Mm -hmm. and, and look what the fruit of it bore. Genocide. You know what that means? That the Christianity in the United States is a gutter religion. The popular conception of what we call the, the popular churches that send missionaries overseas to evangelize countries, they're, they're nothing but agents of the, the United Nations, the, the uh, uh, CIA, FBI. That's all they are. Look at the genocide. That's I don't need to say nothing else. A 99% country, okay? So now... And we say when we have done, we say that all these churches teach that you ought to see Christ in us. So, OK, let's let's look at Rwanda, 1994, April 6. What do we see happening? Ten thousand people being killed every day for 100 days, over a million people killed and not even counting all the people who died after the fallout of something like that after the 100 days. The reprisal crimes and, and, and so on and so forth, revenge crimes. Nobody can even count how many people. I wouldn't be surprised at all if over 2 million people were, were killed. And what are we on the 18th or 19th anniversary of the Rwandan massacre? This is what Christianity is producing in the world, y'all. Christianity is in, it, it works in tandem with the CIA, FBI, the United Nations, the World Bank, uh, 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 Council on Foreign Relations. It works. The Christianity, the 501C Christianity that you and I were raised and baptized in. Guess what? It's of the devil. It's not of God. But that's not even what this video is about. I snapped. <laughs> I snapped. But I just want y'all to know I haven't forgot. We are halfway through the, the genocide. No, I like to call it this. The outpouring of the unholy ghost that was exported from the West by way of government entities, religious entity, and banking entities. The International Monetary Fund. That's your trinity right there that made the ground in Rwanda fertile for genocide. In And by the way, these three entities did this, made the ground fertile for genocide in the name of Jesus Christ. Why do I say that? The country is 99% Christian. You, you, some of y'all are not going to be able to put this together in your head. What are you talking about? He sound crazy. People actually tell me this. I'm really speaking plain to you. Well, well, where do you get that from? Where do you get those statistics? Rwanda? I never heard of Rwanda. What is Rwanda? Ignorance is no excuse. <laughs> All these major religions in, Ro in, in America, they export um, destabilization of other governments. They work in tandem with FBI. And, and, and look at this. Soon as the genocide kicked off over there in Rwanda, the, the, the missionaries, all the diplomats, all the banking uh, 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 entities from the West, they scattered out of the country. 
So soon as, when, when when the people in Rwanda needed the banking interest the most, the, the evangelists the most, and the missionaries the most, and the 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 US government and the United Nations, that's when they started taking people out. Woo! You see the Trinity working here? It's the Trinity of the United States government, the Western governments, the Christian governments, and the banking government. That's your Trinity right there. And, and by the way, all the religions that were stationed over there believe in the Trinity. Where they believe that the Holy Spirit is a person. If they believe so much in the Holy Spirit, why didn't they stay and wait it out and protect the people that they had seeded into the faith? <laughs> this stuff is fake, y'all. It's fake. It's fake. It's not of God. But that's not even what this is about. <laughs> I snapped again. <laughs> Woo, that boy be snapping. But what this video is about, people, does God, this video is about, does God want, does God, what is, God, what is God's will in his people, in human beings being happy in this life? What pleases and glorify God in the way of our happiness? What element of our happiness gives God happiness? You know, all these Christian self and self improvement cycle babble books that's out there and ministers and preachers and conferences and stuff. What makes what makes God happy? What makes God happy? I want to tell you what he makes God happy. Seeking first and only his kingdom. Let me give it to you if you've never seen none of my videos before. When the Bible says in uh, Luke chapter 12, I believe, verse 32, seek ye first the kingdom. And in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, when, it, when, 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 when that scripture is there, you know what's first mean? Only. Only. Exclusively. Outside of everything else that's of the flesh, seek first the kingdom. Matter of fact, that scripture, you could put in almost anything. Before. If you want to be happy, seek first the kingdom. You want a wife, seek the kingdom. The reason why a lot of y'all are married to devils, Christian or otherwise, it's some Christian devils too. The devil do not mind joining the Christian church right now at this in please. <laughs> I think I think the devil has a promotion. <laughs> I think Satan has a promotion going on for his demons to join the Christian church. Just look at the churches. Look at them. Whether they keep Sabbath, whether they keep Sunday, whether they keep the feast, whether they keep the Passover, whatever. <laughs> y'all see y'all think y'all getting away. <laughs> the feast, the trumpets, the Passover, and all. <laughs> Please, the devil sitting right up in there, sitting right up in there with y'all, officiating over all those feasts. <laughs> we we think we think that because we keep the feasts, the devil is invincible. Please, the devil was the the children of Israel kept the feast, and it couldn't, and the feast didn't keep them out of idolatry. Worshiping devils, sacrificing their children. Boy, we do not know what the gospel is. We don't know what faith is, love is, joy. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, Consider the lilies of the field. I'm going to give you a nugget right now. I'm just prepping you for it right now. He said, consider the, consider the lilies of the field, have they neither wheat, they neither uh, reap nor sow. But your heavenly father knows what the, but no, but Solomon in all his glory was not adorned as one of these. I always thought about that scripture. I'm like a lily? I'm like, when I read about the, the story of Solomon and his kingdom and, and how he was, how 
uh, uh, the Queen of Sheba was fawning at the at the at the at the, how gaudy and ostentatious his kingdom was, and I always wondered how was a lily adorned more as this, and then then the Holy Ghost quick that prophetic eye opened up, and I was like, oh boy, oh hallelujah. I had to fall back. Why well, didn't fall back? I had to fall forward. The redeem always fall forward. The redeem, this is a nugget in a nugget. The redeem never fall back. Never. Read any place in the Bible. The redeem never fall backwards. Never, never. That's a nugget. That'll keep you out of a lot of foolishness. The redeem never fall back. The wicked always fall back. They always do. Just to let you know. Now, let's pick up on the other nugget. So that was a nugget. And now I'm going to go to the other nugget. Okay. I want to encase that nugget with this nugget. When Jesus said that, I noticed something about flowers, period, not just lilies. There may be something specific to lilies that applies to how the glory was more uh, beautiful than the glory of Solomon. But I noticed that flowers, lilies, they never take their eyes off of the sun. Have you ever noticed that? They never take their face. When I say eyes, they never take their face. Because I'm speaking in the Holy Ghost. And, and, if, and if you're not in the Holy Ghost, you eyes. Ooh. They never take their face off the, the sun. Have you ever noticed that? When the sun comes up, the flowers are waiting to see the sun. And as a sun is, as the sun appears to be traveling over the horizon, the sun is not really traveling over the horizon. What's happening is the earth is spinning. It's, it's rotating. That's what's really happening. But the flowers always face towards the sun. The sun is a light source. Jesus said he was the light of the world. We getting somewhere now, right? The sun, the flowers, and at night, when the, the sun, the flowers can no longer see the sun, they close up and they meditate. I, that's um, that's this is what I'm getting in the prophetic. The flowers meditate on the sun and the relationship that they had with the sun all day. And they eagerly anticipate all night long to open up and see the sun again in the morning. Solomon was not that faithful. Read the book of Ecclesiastes. He'll tell you in his own testimony he wasn't that faithful. So when the Bible says that Solomon, all his glory was not adorned as one of these, he wasn't. The flowers, they meditate on the sun. They wait for the sun to come up in the morning. They live by the sun. They never take their face off the sun. And the sun representing God. Solomon, he went into great apostasy, started worshiping every God he could find. Sound like Christianity today. Christianity today, y'all, would worship every God it can find. No matter whether they keep the Sabbath or Sunday. It don't matter. But anyway, I want to give you that nugget. The Bible says, take no thought of what you shall eat, what, was you, what you shall wear, wherewithal shall ye be clothed. Don't take no thought about those things. Seek first. Seek first means what? Seek only exclusively. I was taught through the heathen Christian churches that you make you put God first and everything you want shall be added unto you. No, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. It don't say all the things you want. And, 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 and if God says he's going to give you the desires of your heart, He's talking to those that are converted. Those that converted, guess what they seek only? 
the kingdom. So if God's going to give you the, I'm giving you another nugget. If God is going to give you the desires of your heart, that means your heart has been renewed. And you're seeking exclusively the glory and, and success of his kingdom in your field of the vineyard. And so whatever you're seeking, he will give it to you in good measure, pressed down, chicken together and running over. That scripture is one that get abused all the time. That scripture is not talking about people who want to build up the kingdoms of the world. Whatever you want, God is going to give it to you, pressed down, shaking together and running over. No, it's talking about those that are born again and seek only the glory of God's kingdom. God is going to glorify those that glorify him. How? By seeking first his kingdom. This is Prophet Six, family prophets, the angel of the church to the lay of the sins. God bless you.